but God, there's evidence that someone's been in there all the way up the pan. No, that's not their problem to clean it. It's somebody else's. It's your dump, but somebody else can clean it up for you. Some wealthy people will drive a Volvo because it's uh, efficient and safe. Some people will drive a Porsche because they're a big knobhead. Made a meal and threw it up on Sunday. I've got a lot of things to learn. Hello everybody and welcome to the Mark Goldbridge channel. Make sure you smash a like and subscribe. We're on a drive to Old Trafford today. I know I did it before Christmas, but people never believed I went there. So today I'm going to prove it and then we're gonna get on with driving with Goldbridge. And there's a little bit of a, a story to tell here. See if you can solve it in the comments about this clip compared to the next two clips you're gonna see. Anyway, proof of Manchester attendance incoming and then back to the drive home. Hello everybody and welcome to my vlog today. I said I was driving up to Old Trafford and yes, here I am. And I'm actually outside, hopefully you can see it, Lou Macari's Fish and Chip Shop, which um, he used to play for Manchester United, a bit of a legend, but also he is sort of like a symbol of top redism on Twitter because a lot of people on Twitter put followed by Lou Macari on there. So uh, that's his Fish and Chip Shop there. Um, big road behind me. We should get a lot of those in a city. And then uh, we're just coming round now onto Samat Bas Busby Way, and which will lead us down to Old Trafford. So at least I've actually driven up to Old Trafford this time and, and shown you Old Trafford. I did last time, but I didn't actually do it. So if I spin it around, you should be able to see. I don't know whether you can see because I'm not looking, but uh, we're walking down there to Old Trafford. A bit skew with. Back to me. Lovely clear, clear day in Manchester, cold. Just, just been up the M6, which is a little bit like Manchester United, really. Um, I've been driving up and down the M6 for about 15 years and I've never driven up it on and, and had a clean run. They're always doing refurbishments, which is like Manchester United under the Glazers. We're never gonna quite get there. There's always an excuse to build something, but uh, yeah, nice day. We're going to do a video for the United Stand, which you'll have already seen if you're watching this vlog. And uh, yes, not really much to add. I'm not going to start dancing for you or anything like that. But Old Trafford is here. And uh, we're going to record something in a minute. Kiss me where the sun don't shine. The past is yours, the future's mine. I won't be taking you. You're out of time. Have you seen her? Have you heard? Yeah, we're on the way back from Manchester now. Um, nice little fly-in visit. But uh, at least I actually showed you a little bit of Manchester this time. Um, how are we all doing anyway? Um, good good i mean weird times at the moment i have got a john up john update for you he's uh very judgmental john for 2022 he's over his life his wife not over his life his life is still for living i've told him that john don't give up but uh he's over his wife's leaving him which he isn't really he's just pretending but uh he's got some very strong opinions on uh, modern footballers which i disagree with but uh he said pay the minimum wage and they'll stop showing off and doing bad things I said, John, I don't think that's going to stop them doing bad things. And uh, I think minimum wage for footballers when people are paying hundreds of pounds to watch them every match is a bit odd. But we'll talk about John in a bit. Um, I'm driving back from Manchester. In half a mile, slight left. Oh, yeah, what, 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 what are they on about? These bloody sat-navs. I've got my earpiece in so that if there's a better route back, I'll take it. You know what, when I was in a pub when I was 18, and I might have found a girl that took my fancy in a totally amicable way. She liked me, I liked her, that was how it worked. But um, if a better option came along, I'm open to take it. I might not, I might not, but I might have. And um, that's basically what I'm like with a sat-nav. In a quarter of a mile, merge onto the M6, slight left. There's a better route that will save you two minutes. I prefer this route, it's not worth it for two minutes. I'm back in the club again. There's a better option, but you might have to go and buy her a drink and chat to her for half an hour. I've put the work in with this one, thanks. I'm more than happy. 
and that's not me objectifying women or men because it could be a man or a woman in that case it was a woman but you can't talk about anything now with, with, without the fear of it offending someone can you um, it's it's a funny old world I mean I'm, I don't know why I'm correcting myself I'm talking about a hypothetical situation when I was 18 in a pub with a girl I quite like that I've spent time talking to getting to know her having drinks with her she likes me I like her and nobody's objectifying anybody yet get the objects out later I hope, I hope, hopefully she's got some in a bag some goodies but um, no and then I'm like having to justify that if a better option comes along I might go with that that's not objectifying people that's just options you know but you have to overthink everything these days am I offending somebody I was like I was out last Saturday night and was cracking some jokes and uh, I went for the hat trick um, I'm not even going to tell you what the jokes were because I'd get in trouble here. This is this is obviously for public, but uh, it was about something topical. I'm effect effectively um, we were playing darts and uh, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do the joke. I'm not going to do the joke. I'll get in trouble. But effectively, I went for the hat trick. The first, it was close to the bone, basically. You know, a joke that's a bit close to the bone. Jimmy Carr gets in trouble for it all the time. He, he's so close to the blood, to the bone, he's amputated your bone. But. Um, it was a bit close to the bone on two jokes, but everybody laughed. And then the third one, their laugh was 50%. And I thought, whoa, they're laughing out of politeness now. I've gone too far. But, you know, I think a joke, you've, you've got to go for it. I remember Ricky Gervais saying this, you've, you've got to go for it. Um, if you don't buy a lottery ticket, you don't win a lottery. So, there you go. But, um, it is quite weird doing these drive-backs, because on the way up this morning, it was dark, it was cold. I was uh, sipping on a coffee and uh, I was listening to, what was I listening to? I'll tell you what, I was, I, actually I was very disappointed with the radio this morning. I was flipping between um, absolute 90s, um, magic, smooth and probably heart, heart 90s. And you couldn't move for Lighthouse Family, M People, um, the Bee Gees and... George Michael and I, I've got nothing against those four people but you know I need something a bit better than that in the morning give me a bit of Oasis a bit of Stone Roses a bit of Aladdis Morissette just something with a bit with, with a bit of depth you know something uh, anyway actually it was quite, quite a funny story I was um, hopefully it'll be a funny story if not you're gonna say that was that was not a funny story um, the, the, the radio presenter was um, I don't I don't know the radio station but her name was Jenny Faulkner right I think she used to be in Holby City or Casualty now she's got a radio gig I'd love a radio gig I'd bloody love a radio gig me I'd love to do radio not necessarily talk sport I just I actually would like to do radio play my kind of music for my kind of people I think I'd be really good at it because I've got a wide range of music I like I do like Oasis, I do like the Stone Roses, thank you. But I also like um, Fleetwood Mac. I'm, I'm not impartial to a bit of Pet Shop Boys. Um, Erasure, you know, uh, ABBA. Uh, I'm, I've got a wide range of music and I've got, uh, people want to listen, they're, they're interested. But uh, no, I would like to be a radio DJ, but it was it was, it was was funny because she, it's, it had just gone seven o'clock and uh, Jenny Falconer's there and she's, uh, She's, I, think she, I think she's actually on smooth radio and she's like, um, she's reading out the messages, which I think is a nice personal touch. And she's going, Dave and Barbara, are, uh, they're in the hospital uh, waiting for their first granddaughter to be born. And I thought, presumably their daughter or son is having the baby. They're not just hanging around. Imagine if Dave and Barbara don't have any kids themselves and they're just hanging around a hospital trying to pretend that they're, grand, you know, they're going to their grandparents. I thought, oh, that's a sad story. But no, look on the bright side. She was like, um, oh, Carol is listening to us on her AirPods. She's been doing her paper round since half past four in the morning. Who gets up to do her paper round at half past four in the morning? And I tell you what, this is a true story. 
this is how my mind works. I was like, so Carol's got up at half past four to do a paper round. Maybe she's a bit introvert, you know, maybe she doesn't like people. So she's going around posting the, the papers and uh, no one's going to be up. I tell you what, Carol's going to get a bloody mouthful. She might even get a baseball bat if she's putting through something through my door at half past four in the morning. Um, she wouldn't get a baseball bat, I was just trying to be dramatic. But imagine that, getting woken up at half four by your bloody letterbox. You go down, it's the bloody local paper that you're going to use to line the cat's fucking litter bin anyway. At best, it's going in the recycling at half four in the morning. Anyway, and what else did she say? She had something else. Um, oh, Ian, Ian has got up early, made himself a cup of coffee, and he's got back into bed to listen to smooth radio. And Jenny goes, I'll tell you what, whether you're Ian or anybody else, lie back, listen to smooth radio, have a, you can have an extra 10 minutes on me. I'm about to play classic Queen, Radio Gaga. And I thought, I don't know why, I don't know why I thought it. I thought, imagine the laughs you could have on radio, where it's meant to be very, very, very um, safe and uh, clean. Goldbridge on Smooth FM. Lie back, have an extra few minutes in bed, you know, and if you're feeling a bit excited, no one's stopping you from doing what you want. It's your bed. Now, let's play. Frankie goes about Hollywood, relax. Do now, when you call a cut, you know what I'm on about. They do it on the Bake Off all the time. People will be going, filth, Goldbridge, that's filth. They do it on the Bake Off, or bake off all the time. Oh, that's a big rolling pin. Oh, just need it. Need need the need the buns. Need the buns. You want them nice nice and firm. They know what they're on about. They know what they're on about. Actually, you know what? Queen Radio Gaga. I was uh it did come on this morning. Most of that most of that story is true apart from the you know my my interpretation of it, but uh Radio Gaga did come on. All we hear is Radio Gaga, but there's a line in it goes, um, You've had the time, you've had the power, you've yet to have your finest hour. Radio, radio. Right, so it's basically saying, it's a song about the radio. And I, I was listening to that bit and I went, you've, let to, you've yet to have your finest hour. And I thought, it's sad about radio, isn't it? with Wi-Fi, Piers Morgan, and all these modern, popular things, radio is a thing of the past. It's had its day. It took me two minutes to realise I'm bloody listening to the radio on the way up in the car. Radio's not had its finest day. But I did genuinely think, oh, it's sad. When Queen wrote that song, radio was probably still quite popular, and now it doesn't even exist. I genuinely did think that. And then I realised I'm listening to the radio, you twat. So, uh, yeah. I, but you know, I, I, when I'm when I'm an idiot, I'll say I'm an idiot. I genuinely did think the radio was like the compact disc and was obsolete. And then I realised I was watching it. So, listening to it, you can't watch the radio. Well, you can. It doesn't do anything. It's an audio device. Static. Yeah, I'd like to do the radio. <laughs> Got stories to tell. I've got people to interact with. I'd love to do that. I'd, I'd love what Jenny was doing this morning. It's Sunday morning. What are you doing? Christopher is out the front listening to you whilst washing his car. Steve and Irene are having a big row about what's better, chicken or beef, whilst listening to you. Paul is having a big poo and is constipated. It's really, really tiring because she can't get it out. But she's really enjoying listening to your best of the 90s Britpop era songs. Gotta have a laugh. Gotta have a bit of a laugh. That's what I think radio should be. I think it's what people want, a bit of honesty.
everyone goes for a dump. In fact, you know what? I'll go the whole hog. Um, I think, obviously, I think what some people get struggle with is that the human, the human, the human, the human, what's the word? Mannerism. Not is the right, that's not the right word. I mean, personality. I think you can, you can tell a lot about people by their toilet behaviour. Now, I'm not saying go and drill a hole in a toilet and watch people. You'll get locked up for that. that, that that's basically illegal and odd. But there is an observation you can make from the toilets. I mean, people, some people won't like this. This is very true. And I'll tell you what it is. And I hadn't really thought about it before, but it's just dropped into my head. Some people are very driven, motivated, tidy, well-mannered people. Some people are lazy and don't give a shit about anybody but themselves. Notice the word shit, we're talking about toilet. Now, I don't know whether you've ever worked in a place where other people work or you've just been in a pub toilet or whatever, right? Unfortunately, over the years I've worked in offices and, and many other jobs, and even back in my school days, I never liked it but sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. You've got to go for a number two at work. Some people really embraced it. They'd have papers, books, you know, they'd, they'd look forward to that afternoon dump where they could read the paper or whatever. For me, there's nothing like your own throat. Um, but where you can really understand the human psyche on whether somebody is a selfish, moody, lazy shit or whether somebody is you know caring um, and uh, diligent and hard-working um, is by the state of the toilet pan and how you lead it leave it and what I mean by that is over the years I've been to into toilets looked in there and you wouldn't know anyone had been in there Apart from the little trickle of the uh, water, which means it's recently been flushed. But you go in there, I'm not talking about smells, you go in there, there's nothing in there. Just a little trickle of water, which means you think, somebody's been in here in the last five minutes. There's nothing. It's clean water, it's a clean pan, absolutely nothing there. And you think, this is somebody who's either done a very, very clean dump, or, even if they have made a mess, they're conscientious enough to know that that's their mess, and they've cleaned it up. On the other hand, I've been into toilets where somebody's freshly been there, or maybe not freshly been there. There's no water trickling down. It wasn't flushed a few minutes ago. It was flushed maybe an hour ago. But God, there's evidence that someone's been in there all the way up the pan. No, that's not their problem to clean it. It's somebody else's. It's your dump, but somebody else can clean it up for you. Lazy, irresponsible, don't care about anybody but themselves. I've used it, I've done my business, I'm not cleaning it up. And then there's the worst of all. There's the ones that don't even flush it away. Well, people will say, Goldbridge, you're being an idiot. You can't tell what somebody's personality is from a toilet pan. You can, you definitely can. Because if you go for a dump and you clean everything up and you use the sponge thing or whatever it is, see, I obviously don't, I've blown it, but you know, to be honest, I'm quite regular and it just all comes out. I only have to wipe once. But the reality is, I wish. The reality, sometimes I've used a whole roll. You, th you think, how is there more to clean? How is I'm, I'm, I'm on my 10th attempt and there's still more there. I'm going to have to go to level two and get in the shower. But the reality is, I think I think it's a good observation. I, I, I would probably be, there's probably some academic out there going, I love the way this man's work, mind works. He's basically just identified the human mannerism from toilet behaviour. And he's right. Selfish people who don't give a shit about anybody else. They have a dump, they flush, and if it's messy afterwards, it's not their problem, they're not going to clean it. Whereas conscientious, responsible people, they flush it, they see, the, they see the stain and they think, I can't leave that, it's not fair on anybody else, I'll clean it up. I think I'm onto, I think I'm onto something. Get in the comments with ideas of other things that you think are about it. It's the same as people at McDonald's. 
I'll do it for people who like food and don't like going for a poo. Like, McDonald's is another example, right? If you're eating, you get your Big Mac and chips. What's your go-to McDonald's? Big Mac, Big Mac, fries, strawberry milkshake. That's what I normally get most of the time. In my greedy days, I'd get Big Mac meal, large fries, uh, strawberry milkshake, and the cheeseburger. But to be honest with you, it didn't take me long to realize that regular to large fries is a total rip-off. It's just not worth it. Um, anyway, you've at your McDonald's. Um, you're finished. They've given you one of them brown trays anyway. You're never more than five meters away from a bin. You literally have all your cardboard waste. You walk to the bin, you push it into the bin because it's a massive bin, you tip it, it all falls out and you leave your brown tray on the top, job done. The people who eat it, and you know who I'm talking, some of you, some of you are watching now. You leave a dirty pan and you also leave your McDonald's on the table for the cleaner to come and do. You know who you are. It's lazy people. Selfish people. Or people who just think the world rolls around them. I guarantee, I tell, I tell you what, if I'm going into the toilet after Piers Morgan or I'm using this table at McDonald's, I, I know what I'm going to get. I know what I'm going to get. Um, anyway, what are you? What are you? John, John the Piper's son. He's not a Piper's son. So John's my mate. I haven't really seen him much since Christmas, but uh, his wife left him. I spoke a lot about him last year. It was on the cards. She, uh, they got a new car and uh, she was out all last year. It wasn't a bikini, but it may as well have been. She was washing that car three times a day in a bikini. It was basically, it was basically, it was basically, uh, it was basically a, her own form of Tinder. She was advertising her goods. John thought it was hot. I told him, John, it's March, it's freezing. And she's out there like that which for her was probably an added bonus because it, met, it firmed everything up. But the reality is she left him. She left John and he, he had a lonely Christmas. And um, But he's bounced back, he's bounced back. He's kept the dog, I think he even knows its name now. And I saw him the other day and he knows, he knows I do a bit of YouTube and he knows I like football. And uh, you know, he's, he's back pounding the streets, chatting to everybody, telling them, telling them what he's up to. He's down the gym. He reckons he's got a four pack. I said, it's a six pack, John. He said, I can only count four. I said, well, there's something wrong with you. What, what, what are you counting that's got four? I, I said, I don't, I don't know what, what you think a four pack is, but you need a six pack. But he's convinced he's got a four pack. He was going to show me. I said, I don't want to see it. Um, anyway, um, he knows I like the football and he was like, what do you think about all this going on with these footballers then? I said, John, I don't want to talk about it, um, you know, but I'm sure you do. And he said, I'll tell you what, they're a disgrace. They are a disgrace, Goldbridge. I didn't say that, but I'll add it into that. He never, he never calls me by a name. He never does. I don't know whether that's a good thing or not. He just, he never calls anybody by their name. Like, he just, he just talks. But, um, I don't know that's rude or Anyway, but look, I'll, I'll let him off, his wife's left him. Um, and he said, uh, well, I think they've got too much too soon. I said, John, I'm really interested in this because you know next to nothing about football. And now you're gonna stick your nose in something that you don't know anything about. I'm gonna enjoy this because uh, I love it when people stick their nose in a beehive and get stung. So let, 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 I was like, oh, John, I'm really interested in this. And he loves that. He loves it when you, uh, when you massage his ego. He's doing a lot of that himself at the moment, we know why. But um, anyway, the reality is, he said, uh, yeah, these footballers, they get, they've got too much too soon and uh, they're out of control. They're out of control. And I said, John, what are you talking about? He says, I've seen it on Twitter. I said, you're on Twitter? Please tell me what your at is. I'm gonna have great fun here. Um, so yes, um, I, I, I wanna know what John's Twitter is. I'll let you know on the next one. But um, get him some followers and um, I imagine it's just boring stuff like, uh, what would John post on Twitter? I reckon he's quite political, I think he's a Tory. Um, he's probably pro the death penalty for littering and um, definitely reads the Daily Mail. But nothing wrong with
remember that. Anyway, he said, yeah, too much too soon. They think they're it and uh, they're out of control. And I said, John, what would you do? And he said, well, it's easy to solve. They're paying them millions of pounds a week. I said, no, no, they're not. He said, they are, they're on millions of pounds a week. I said, they're not, John. Who's told you this? You've been reading the mail again, haven't you? They're not on millions of pounds a week. They're on millions of pounds a year. Well, whatever they're on, it's too much. They need to be on minimum wage and they need to get out and about in the schools and the hospitals and, 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 and real, realize what the real, real heroes are. The real talent is teaching and nurses. And I said, well, what about fire brigade? What about, uh, what about the doctors? No, the real heroes of this country are the teachers and the nurses. And I said, John, there's nothing wrong with teachers and nurses, but I, I do think that nurses have, uh, have had a lot of praise over the last few years. And what, what about doctors? Are, are they part of the same thing, NHS? No, nurses and teachers. And he, he wouldn't move. So if you're a teacher and a nurse, John loves you. If you're a doctor, or a surgeon, I've just been absolutely cut up here. Um, then, yeah, I don't think John's feeling the love. So anyway, um, he, uh, he he wants footballers on minimum wage, and he wants them to go to schools and hospitals. Um, I don't know what he wants them to do, but um, I said, John, to be fair, I don't think this is anything new with uh, footballers. I think they've always been like this. And I think a lot of celebrities are like this. They live lives that are absolutely bubbled. They live in a bubble, John. And, um, you know, many of them, especially in the sports industry, have had people begging for them from they were 14. You know, clubs lining up for them at 13, 14. Contracts, boot deals at, you know, 15, 16. Agents, clubs, bending over backwards to get them at the club, chucking money at their families and all sorts. They don't know the word no, John. They just know the word yes. And a lot of them get away with it for years and years and years. And then some of them, some of them are just bad people, John. Just bad people like anybody else. Like a dustbin man, like a judge. Anybody can be a bad person, John, but they're in a position where they probably get away with it for a long time because they've got so many people telling them they can do what they want and they've got so much money. It's greed, John, that's the problem. And if you take, if you limit their wage, the money's still there. They're there to be shot at. And, uh, I think that's the lesson that's the lesson that is the lesson that is the lesson it's not football's problem it's not celebrities problem anybody's capable of doing anything bad the problem is if you're a celebrity or a footballer or whatever one day you're on top of the world you can map the next 10 years out I'm gonna earn loads of money I'm gonna be one of the best players in the world etc etc you do something bad all that's gone because the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And God, everyone will walk away when you've done something wrong. And it doesn't matter whether you've got a million pounds in your wallet. I'll tell you what, it's some bloody big wallet if you've got a million pounds in it. Or uh, 10 pounds in your wallet. The life lessons you need to learn are still the same. I look back when I was growing up. I was a bloody idiot. At 23 I was a prat. I remember my 23rd birthday in Dublin. I act like a right prat. I was a right prat. I was in this bar under Tari Street Station, I can't remember what it's called. We'd booked out the top bit that was quite small. And I was an idiot. Absolute Larry Pratt. Because everyone was there for my birthday. I'd had a bit too much to drink. I think I was in I think I'd had a bit of an argument with the girlfriend at the time. And uh, I was just an idiot. I was just an idiot. I was chucking stools across the floor. Not at, not at anybody. I was just being a brat. It's a bit like Liam Gallagher was in them days. And uh, I think, you know, I didn't have the maturity that hopefully I've got now. Um, but you've got to have the right people around you. And I think, like, I do feel sorry for these youngsters 
oh, you don't have to be young. You could still be doing it at 30, 40. You know, I bet this footballers who've retired are still, who are still prats because they've had it all their life. You're, you're, you're great, you're great, you're great, you're great. No one's ever told them you're not great. Actually, you're quite rude. You've got a bad attitude. No one dares does it. But it's on the responsibility of the individual to find correct role models. And I think that when I think about growing up, I loved David Beckham. I thought he was a fantastic player. But I don't know what he was like as a person. I just wanted to be him as a player. He wasn't a role model because I didn't know what he was like as a person. Um, I think as uh, when I look at the role models in my life, they came from real life. Whether they were friends, bosses, family members. You take bits from people that you admire and respect. And I think you learn more from people who tell you no, that's not the right thing to do, I think you should do this. It doesn't mean that everyone tells you no is right. Somebody can tell you no and you learn that actually yes, but I just don't, I don't think you're putting yourself in a safe place in any walk of life if you're surrounded by people who are just telling you great all the time. When are you going to learn? Imagine that. I think back to being 14. Imagine if I'd been blessed as being good enough that you know, United want me, Liverpool want me, Chelsea want me. And they're all taking my parents out for a nice spag bol or fish and chips. So just trust me, ch cheap date. You don't need to go fine dining Michelin star, fish and chips on a Friday night and they'll, they'll, you've got them. But um, imagine that, 14, put yourself in these shoes, right? 14 years of age, all these football clubs want you. They're offering you this, that and the other. I don't know, you go to United boot deal you're one of the best players in the youth setup but you're seven years away from the first team agent i want to be your agent I, we want to do your boot deal we want to get you on a contract you know you've never touched the first team and you're on five grand a week you hit the first team you're on 30 40 50 grand a week that's that five six seven eight years from being 14 has anyone ever took you aside and said, you know what, your attitude stinks, you're really rude, you treat people like shit, you've got a different girlfriend every week, or boyfriend, I don't know. You don't value anything because everybody just tells you you can do what you want because, you, because, of, because you're a good footballer. I'd hate to be that person because where's the development as a person? Basically, from 14, you've just got people telling you you're brilliant. I think of myself at 14, probably up until about, well even, even today I'm learning, but you know, massively between the age of 14 and 23, learning all the time. How can you learn when everyone's telling you you're brilliant or too scared to say you're not brilliant because you might go and get a new agent or a new sponsor or a new club or a new friend? I'm not saying we create these monsters. I'm not saying they're monsters. If you've got bad things in you, you might do bad things. But are these people becoming the people they can be? Surrounded by money and yes people from being young kids. I don't think it's a massive leap to say you're gonna create, or there's a high possibility you're gonna create a lot of greedy, self-centered, egotistical, people who don't value anybody else but themselves so my lesson to anybody would be your best lesson in life is to learn to be a good person from people who are real with you and not people who are lying to you I always 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 judge praise with skepticism just don't trust the praise. You know, maybe that maybe I'm a little bit too cynical, but uh, I think it's easy to give praise. I think it's a lot harder to give constructive criticism. And it's definitely a lot harder to receive it. But if you can take criticism in a constructive way, you'll be a man, my son, or a daughter. Or a woman, my daughter. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, that was enough of that serious bridge. I'm probably going over the speed limit a little bit here. I need to uh, slow down a little bit. Oh no.
thought it's alright. I thought it was a th I thought it was a 50 to 60. Slow down. I'm moving on up now. I've just realised I've been chewing gum the whole way as well. It's a little bit rude. A little bit rude. I prefer driving at night. It's just some, I, don't, I don't like driving in the day. I prefer driving at night. It's something more relaxing. I'm not going to fall asleep. That's uh, that's dangerous. But um, I do prefer driving at night. Yeah, I hope John gets a girlfriend soon. I pity her, but um, it'll be better for him. And I think he'll learn from his mistakes. I think he's more. Uh, his eyes are his eyes have been opened up like this. You know, it'll be a better. It'll be more observant, I think, in the future. You know, when your wife's going out five times a week from eight o'clock at night till three o'clock in the morning. She's telling you she's going to Tesco to do the shop. And she's coming back with a meal deal, stinking of alcohol. She ain't going shopping, mate. Not in the way he thinks, anyway. Boom, 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 boom. 2022, what's it got for you? Well, hopefully that C word won't be getting a mention again anytime soon. I'm talking about COVID. Hopefully that's gone. It'd be weird when we look back on that, won't it? Hopefully we look back on that. I mean, you just never know if there's another wave coming, but uh, the world, for, I mean, it's two years. We're coming up for two years of COVID as well. Two years. That first year seemed to drag on for ages, and then the second year went quite quick. But I'm not going to dwell on it. I can't wait to do my chicken bakora, by the way. It is coming. It's just really about fitting it in. So I'm hoping in the next couple of videos on this channel, I will be doing the chicken bakora. You can tell a lot about people, by the way, they drive as well. You can. That, that probably would have been better than the toilet pan. It's probably a little bit more obvious though, because you've got two hints on people's behaviour in cars. Whereas in the toilet pan, I think there's just one obvious on what they're like. But car behaviour, you've got the way they drive and the car they drive. You know, some people will just cut you up and not care about it. Some people will indicate to come out, and even when you leave them a space, they still won't dare do it. They're over safe. Not, not even safe. They're over. You know, some people will. will uh, you'll let somebody out. Some people will flash their hazard lights and say thank you. Some people just won't. And obviously, the car that they drive says a lot about them. Are they wealthy? Is it stolen? Have they got a big ego? Some wealthy people will drive a Volvo because it's uh, efficient and safe. Some people will drive a Porsche because they're a big knobhead. Doesn't mean everyone who drives a Porsche is a big knobhead. I do like Porsche. Um, and I'm not completely a knobhead. So, um, I, 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 think, I think you can... I'd never want to be a psychiatrist. I'm not that interested in anybody else. Um, I am a bit, but not to that extent I'd want to get paid for it. I wouldn't want to listen to eight different people's problems a day. Even though you might be helping them a lot. I mean, look, seriously, I wouldn't. I, 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 I do like to help people. Check out my charity work. But I... I can't... I couldn't do it full time, I th but I do think I do think the human psyche is really interesting. I, th I think that we conceal a lot, but we also reveal a lot. And I'm not talking about body parts. I'm talking about behaviours. Yeah, the way somebody dresses. 
you know, you take a man who wears a suit to work. Might be the same suit, but you can tell a lot. You can tell a lot by the colour of the shirt they're wearing. Is it flamboyant? Is it plain? Is it cut? Is it ironed? Are they wearing aftershave? What aftershave are they wearing? Have they styled their hair? Have they got a beard? Do they wear makeup? Do they moisturise? How do they walk? What shoes are they wearing? What bag have they got? What phone have they got? Loads of things. Does somebody who spends a lot of time on white teeth, well-groomed hair, skin, clothes, does that mean they're insecure? Does that mean they're arrogant? Does that mean they just like to look after themselves? It is quite interesting, but as I say, I'm not that interested that I'd uh, be a psychiatrist. I don't know whether I'd be a good, I'd be a good radio presenter, I'm convinced. I'm not sure I'd be a good psychiatrist because my problem would be, if you caught me on a good mood, I'm really useful. Like, the only reason I went in the police is because I wanted to help people. And uh, also, I liked Inspector Morse. So, it was a double, double win for me. But, if you catch me in the right mood, I, you know, I'm very good at listening and helping people and giving advice. But, as a creative, I can be quite flamboyant. So, you know, what I mean by that is, I like to mix things up. So, one, you know, from one hour to the next, I might change, you know, I think you've got to be consistent as a psychiatrist, haven't you? You know, if somebody comes in and says, like if John comes in and says, my wife's left me, I'm really fed up, I don't know what to do, what do you advise? You know, I'm thinking about selling everything and going to live in America. Um, if I'm in a right mood, I might go, no, John, you've got friends, you've got family, you've got a nice house. This is just a drop stitch in life's tapestry. You don't need to change your life. It was your partner that needed to change her life. You need to keep where you are stable with the John that you know and find somebody that respects and loves that John in the life that you've built for yourself. Then the next day, I, I might go, yeah, sell it all and uh, don't go and live in America. Go and live in Alaska and in the snow and never buy a phone again and just see what it's like. So I just wouldn't be consistent with decisions or, or advice, which I think you do need to be. Definitely. Get in the comments. Goldbridge is a psychiatrist or Goldbridge is a radio presenter. Anyway, it's been a pleasure. Make sure you smash a like on the video. Subscribe, bottom right hand corner. And uh, I hope you've liked this content today. I've certainly enjoyed spending the last however long with you, chatting away. And I'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching.